Dr. Lenny is in from pandemic. I think many of us have attended his online lectures, his free master classes, and that's what is commendable. The knowledge which he dis is, uh, shares in his master classes are really, really um, encouraging. Uh, to do more and more work towards integrated medicine. Uh, let's hear from Dr. Lenny and his role is importance of metal toxicity and oral chelators. So Dr. Lenny, over to you. I don't need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this working? This one is probably. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know the whiff of food behind is coming in. Uh, I'm not going to keep you too long there from your dinner. There won't be any food lunch. till we finish all the lectures of what was planned till that's, before lunch. That's what Principal Millie is saying. And thank you for giving me this opportunity and this slot. My dear friends, first I'd like you all to give a big hand to yourselves. And I'll tell you why. Please do it. You are here on a Sunday morning trying to understand what functional medicine is and how you can use it for your patients. It's not for yourself, for your patients. Either way, you would make money if you, are, if you have to examine them and they come to you. But you're trying to do something good for them. So thank you for being the doctor you are meant to be because that is where we are all failing today. If today... Our patients don't trust us, and they trust Dr. Google Singh more than each of us who have spent years in medical school. It's because we have failed them. And you are here trying to correct that, so thank you. And I'd like to wish all of you a very, very good day beyond this, learning more and getting more knowledge for your own patients. I have been asked to speak on this topic of metal toxicity. I don't know whether I am the right person to speak, but probably I'm the only guy who's been along with Praveen. Where's Praveen? Praveen, are you here? Yes. Along with Praveen Saxena, way back in 2004 5, we started the first metal toxic toxicology workshop in India. And we had with us our mentor, Dr. Hasnain Patel, and I, I'd like to dedicate this to him because He's having his own challenges with health. You know, all of us do. We are all human. Doctors are also human. Yeah, so this one especially for him. Right? If, this is, if this is making a problem, uh, just give me a hand mic. Yeah, so way back then, we set the first metal toxic toxicology workshop, and we were wondering why we are doing that those days. A small group of about 50 doctors attended it then. It's grown into a big, big ocean now because a lot of doctors do practice it. Uh, and as we go along, you'll understand why we are talking about heavy metals. And why is it so important in our lives? My dear friends, the, the five heavy metals that we talk about, or the four that we talk about, are lead, cadmium, mercury, arsenic, and sometimes aluminum as well. But these are the ones that are termed very, very toxic. But the first question when I speak to any patient about metal toxicity or to any doctor friend of mine about heavy metals, the first question is this. How do we get metals in our body? Why are we so concerned about it? And finally, what do we do? And the answers are very simple. The air that you breathe is full of heavy metals. The food that you are eating 
is full of heavy metals. The water is polluted, my dear friends. The groundwater is polluted. Years ago, there were samples taken even 20, 30 kilometers out of Class C cities just to see what the groundwater was, and it had mercury in it. It had cadmium in it. It had arsenic in it. Are you aware that India is the only country in the world which accepts, among, of course, many smaller countries, but what we, call, we consider ourselves to be a superpower today. But still, we are the dumping ground of arsenic. We are the only country that produces fertilizers with arsenic. The world doesn't want it. It's sent to India because we are consumers of arsenic. When we put it in that soil, the plant absorbs it, my dear friends, and the plant doesn't excrete it. It gets into you. It gets into your food chain. That's why we have metal toxicity. Everything that you are eating is contaminated. If you ask Praveen Saxena, he will talk about glyphosate. Do you know what glyphosate is? Any of you? Huh? Glyphosate is a VD side. Okay? And we, we think Mosento is not in this country. But Mosento's major money is from, from, from glyphosate. Our country uses it. What does glyphosate do? Today morning we had fantastic lectures from Preeti Nanda and uh, somebody else spoke about the gut as well, Dr. Anup. You can't handle the gut if you destroy your microbiome. And there's no way you can get rid of that glyph glyphosate. Are you aware of this? There's not a single modality that we have spoken about that gets rid of that glyphosate. And that glyphosate gets into your body every day, specifically in this country because 80% of our population is vegetarian. Comes from those plants. I remember about 15 years ago when I used to go to Surat, I had this so among the 20 odd thousand heart patients that I've treated. I had this patient who came to me and said, you know what, doc? I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't eat non-veg. I'm a pure Jain. How did I get heart disease? And I said, it's because of all those three that you got heart disease. Because probably the guys who smoke don't. When I stopped smoking, I got a heart attack. My wife still smokes. She's never got a heart attack. And this is in lighter way, and I'm telling you this. These are facts. But I did tell him. I said, it's the, it's the, it's the food that you eat. The vegetarian vegetables that you eat that get you this heavy metals. But what am I saying or whatever I'm telling you now, does it have evidence? Let's see if it's got evidence. Does it, does it affect your, your, your health? Let's look at it. Is this working? Yeah. Ah, it's working, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's okay. You need a, you need a hard thumbnail. I thought. Anyway. So I'm not getting, getting into this because this actually takes me about an hour to explain why metals affect you and that's the least time I have but I just put one slide to show you a very simple thing that happens and for those of you who don't want to get into biochemistry here it is let's look at this functional metallothionin when you have a slot for zinc and this happens a lot in many of our thyroid receptors you need zinc for T4 to get converted into T3, which is the active form. If you have cadmium, cadmium goes and sits on those zinc receptors. What happens? That whole biochemical reaction stops. And then what do you do? Hi, I am hypothyroid. I'll take T4. But that T4 is not converting, my dear friends, to T3. What are you doing? You've got too much of cadmium. Where does the cadmium come from? You know the, the tires of our cars? When I was in college, we used to get rubber tires. We used to remove them and put radial tires. How many of you remember that? The older guys who bought cars those days, yeah? Now, every bike has a radial tire. In the process of that radialization, they add cadmium. The dust, you're breathing it. 
You need very small amounts. You don't need, need to be, you don't need to be poisoned. You need those small quantities to come in to shut this biochemical reaction slowly. Is there evidence? Let's see. Lots of it. Lots of it which we ignore. Lots of it which we ignore, specifically when it, why I put heart here, because this is where patients ask me, how do I get heart disease? How do I get my blocks because of heavy metals? Evidence is there, but we don't look at it. So many studies. I put a few here. I could sit here for the next three hours and give you studies after studies, literature after literature, published stuff that shows you heavy metals cause heart disease and many other diseases. Here is another one, arsenic. I was talking about arsenic. Again, for hypertension and heart disease, right? Then somebody told me they are very old ones, and I'll show you the more, more recent ones as well. This one actually showed us that even mercury was responsible for heart disease. Yeah, uh, is it going forward? Oh. The same one. Then you had, yeah, this is again f for mercury causing heart disease and, and, and myocardial infarction. Today we spoke a lot about the gut. Do heavy metals actually affect the gut and how does it affect your overall health? Let's look at it. Arsenic cadmium causes significant changes in your gut microbiome and metallo metabolism by affecting bile acids, amino acids associated with metabolic health. 2019, as recent as this. You have more. This was in 2022, last year. Evidence that your microbiome gets affected by heavy metals. There's another one here. These are all coming from various parts of the world, some of them even from our own Indian researchers. I can keep going on. I've got a few here. And so here you have them, and I've listed a whole lot of them. You have inflammatory bowel disease, cancers, atherosclerosis. All these are recent studies coming out. Obesity, liver disease, kidney disease, cardiac, autism, of course, we talk, all talk about autism, epilepsy, atopic dermatitis. Name it and you have it. Heavy metals affect every damn system in our body. And yet, we, we eat them on a daily basis. And I have any number of you being doctors and functional medicine practitioners, if I give you, let's say, CBD, the first question is like, Dr. Parul asked a little earlier, is it habit-forming? But we don't ask questions about what we put in our mouth. We don't. We don't, despite having so much of evidence. We, as doctors, are responsible where our society is going. And if we can't handle the situations that we have, it is because we, ourselves, are not mindful of what's happening around us, right? They spoke of the my, my gut microbiome. What happens when it gets altered, it disrupts the barrier, alters metabolism, causes neurological disorders, detrimental, detrimental metabolites that cause cancer, it causes cardiovascular disorders as well, diabetes, obesity, all of that is all one big part of the puzzle. And we try to treat everything else. We try to treat the, the, we try to treat the cardiovascular problems. We try to reverse obesity and diabetes. Obesity today is a billion dollar business. But we don't take care of the gut and the cause of what disrupts that gut. Heavy metals is one of the major causes. And we just don't bother about it. From yesterday to today, we just had a passing reference. Heavy metals do this. But do we know how serious the problem is? No. If you're not going to pay attention to it, 
you're also going to be suffering. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because heavy metals, like most other problems, gives you only vague symptoms. You can't relate it to anything else, my dear friends. You can't. You can't say, I've got heavy metal toxicity. Because when it starts, it is vague. What do you get? Fatigue. And we say fatigue because I've had COVID or I have had a COVID vaccine. That vaccine also has given you metal toxicity, by the way. You don't realize why you're getting that fatigue. Right? Depression. Antidepressants. All of us write it. We're fed up of that patient coming to us with, her, with depression. And we write it out. But we don't go to see why that depression. Anxiety. Somebody was talking about, or Dr. Anup spoke about why you get digestive problems when, you're, when you have anxiety and depression. You know what anxiety does? Anxiety stimulates your limbic system, the primitive brain. It tells that part of the brain that you are running away from the tiger that you would do 70,000 years ago. You're in a fight or flight mode. And when you are doing that, you don't need to eat, right? So you're not going to be eating. So your entire digestive system shuts down. That is one of the reasons why you have problems with the gut. What are the other vague symptoms that you see? Insomnia, digestive problems. We have insomnia, we give melatonin. Don't realize that there are other issues involved here. Hormonal issues, autoimmune disorders. Most of these are vague. We try to treat them with whatever we have. But we're not going to the root cause. And whenever I have chelated with patients who come with these vague treatments, they thank me. They say, we are doing great thanks to you. And that patient really thanks you when you get them back to health. Because they would have gone to everybody, tried to sort their problem out, and they've not got an answer to it. So why am I so bothered about this? Because when you get toxicity of heavy metals, it starts when with a steady decline in energy, with a decline in productivity and quality of life. That's the first thing that happens. And it's only after years of facing that, that you actually see cardiovascular disease, premature dementia, and total debilitation. But the unfortunate part is, none of us, doctors and patients, ever look at heavy metal burden as a possible cause of our symptoms. We don't. Uh, I'm not having a, uh, Dr. Mili, this thing of yours is not showing. Oh, it's four minutes left. All right. Oh, I was looking at the other one. <laughs> All right, so what do you do? What do you do? You need to look at real detox at the cellular level. All right? You need to remove the source. You need to look at regenerating that cell membrane. You need to restore the cellular energy, reduce inflammation, reestablish methylation. So. How do you go about doing that? The only way you can do this, and I'm, I'm saying this again, the only way you can do this is when you use what we call true binders or true chelators. What is a binder? What is a chelator? It is something that takes the heavy metal. It pulls it out of the tissues, not from your blood. It's sitting in your tissues. It pulls it out from the tissues and takes it out of your body. It doesn't drop it elsewhere. And so a large number of so-called chelators that we use, especially the ones that Dr. Praveen spoke of yesterday. What was that? Danya? No, no. He was, huh? he was saying make a masala. No, no, that's what. But, but, but the, food, the food items. Most of them, and I'll come to that slide, will only redistribute your heavy metals. You need to get them out. All right, so let's look at that. Here, the story of chl chloral and cilantro. These are not chelators. What happens is, when they pull the heavy metal out, they'll take it and dump it in your gut. 
you also get after a heavy meal a lot of bile that is secreted but that bile is not to be thrown out of your body it takes it, it does its job it comes into the small intestine gets reabsorbed when it's getting reabsorbed it takes this heavy metals along with it and the heavy metals get reabsorbed and they are redistributed so you don't need your heavy metals to reach the gut they have to get out of the body this is what your chloral and cilantro do so doing this 10 day detoxes don't help detoxification of heavy metals is a slow process is a load long drawn out process it takes years it takes years for your body to be out of heavy metals i can guarantee you this and dr pravin will agree with me if you have mercury in your body it takes 30 years or more to detoxify your body doesn't happen with a 10 day detox my dear friend so don't or don't even go there so what do you do this is what you do go to the root remove the source the source is your mercury in your amalgams if you've had vaccines the aluminum it has to be chelated all of these go and accumulate in all your major organs then that is where the resultant imbalances start and you see the symptoms so the proper detox is first go and get rid of the source if you still have amalgams remove it but just don't go to a dentist and remove it there are two or three biological dentists here ask them how it should be done i don't have the time to tell you but we have a protocol by which we do that right uh so no diet and this is what i want to to tell you i have not too much of time no diet no proper food supplements help you have to remove the source it's only then that the body starts healing immune system reestablishes the gut reestablishes my dear friends and your health begins to come back to normal and this is what i do i was not asked to speak on iv chelation but i need to put it here because she said what will you do in that case without the iv chelation you just can't get rid of the heavy metals without the oral dmsa you can't get rid of the heavy metals and unfortunately dmsa is not available in our country very easily so if you can't do iv you need to do the oral chelated dmsa the other oral chelator and a true chelator is alpha lipoic acid not glutathione and vitamin c my dear friend not glutathione and and nac which we use so often if you are using glutathione and nac for detoxification please follow it up with vitamin c edta or dmsa all right uh, i'm going to just get over this because we don't have the time uh so like i said edta chelation the other oral, oral chelator is dmsa you can use alpha lipoic acid if you really want to do it but don't ask me for how long i have been taking ala for the last 12 years every day 600 mg somebody asked me how do you look so good probably because i keep chelating myself every other week probably that's the only answer i can give you because other than that i don't do anything different from what you do i eat the same crap that you all of you eat i get the same food chain that all of you do i probably exercise 20 minutes or so not more than that and there are people who do much more than me i still sleep late i still still watch movies late night i still do everything that you do but i believe that if the the high dose vitamin c the edta that i take on a regular basis the ala that i do every day helps me stay healthy as far as possible all right so i'm going to skip this a little bit because this is a little bit of a delay uh, okay so somebody spoke about dr sri spoke about vitamin c chelating i just want you to pay attention to this it chelates every damn metal it's not that powerful as edta for lead and others but it does So if you're scared about doing EDT chelation just do vitamin C at least you'll help your patients. How many grams? I do for chelation I do 15 grams that's max. That's for wellness. I keep doing it every week. I tell patients do about 15 20 every year. Uh glutathione like I told you doesn't is not a true chelator but it's good because it helps you to either remove or stop it from getting reabsorbed and redistributed. so it brings it back to the gut but you need to have something after that to get it out so i want to speak to you about something else and i'm going to finish in exactly 2 more minutes uh most of us 
and I spoke about a glyphosate a little earlier. Most of us don't realize that you don't need just oral chelators or IV chelators to de detoxify yourself. One of the best organs to detoxify you is the skin. And from 2006, whenever my patients came to me with bad kidney functions and I could not chelate them, I would use something known as the far infrared sauna from 2006. Far infrared sauna, by the way, does two more things. And I'm not going to go through this entire presentation. I'm going to, take you, I'm going to give you two more take-home messages on far infrared sauna. The first thing it does, it is, it is the only one that also detoxifies gly glyphosate. But you need to do it consistently. That's the only, only uh, intervention that you have for glyphosate. I, keep, I do it every alternate day for three, three to six months for all my patients. I take a six-month uh, membership from them. <laughs> because I tell them, otherwise, don't waste your money. Don't come, don't, don't come to me. And it's absolutely cheap because I want them to do it. Uh, the second thing it does, which I realized post this COVID, is because, and, and, and I realized that because I used to put my patients with severe fatigue in there. It gives you infrared, right? Infrared increases subcellular melatonin. That is what used to help us 70,000 years ago when we were hungry. There was no kitchen. There was no swiggy. There was no supermarket to make food. We had to go and hunt. But we were hungry. Where do we get the energy from? From the sun. That was our body's ability to help ourselves. Melatonin, subcellular melatonin is raised by far infrared sauna. That's why post that, you don't need to have a bath. You just need to wipe yourself. You really feel energized for the next four to five hours. You don't need to take anything else. Far infrared sauna it detoxifies you. It energizes you. And I'm not promoting it because there's a far infrared sauna here. But I find it one of the easiest modalities for everyone who practices naturopathy, Ayurveda, homeopathy, Put a far infrared sauna in your, in your clinics. Charge 500 rupees per, sit, per sitting, and you will ensure that your patients start responding to whatever treatments you give them. You don't want to do IV chelation. You don't want to do oral chelation. You don't want to do anything else. Put this. You don't require a license for this. Right? So this is something that I want you to take home and go with and help your patients to do better. A lot of... I can give you a lot of data. I can spend about an hour and a half on far infrared sauna, show you scientific data, how it helps you. Sir, Dr. Lari, please go and uh, whisper your okay. dua and only you speak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've already told you. And for those, yes, Dr. Mili, I'll do that. I do it for one full day before each conference. No. You only come for the conference. No, no, no. But, no, but I want you to... I want you to remember this. If you do practice chelation, I don't know how many of you do. How many of you do? Little bit we do. Quite a few. Ensure that you have the far infrared sauna there. Why? I have. Because whenever, whenever you have your serum creats going up and you want to give a break to that chelation, put the patient in the far infrared sauna for two weeks. You see how the serum creats start coming down as well, right? That, these are some of the things that you learn when you practice a lot. And we do a lot of chelation. We do a lot of detoxification. Finally, my dear friends, I have this book. It is available on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's, it's a book that has a comprehensive guide on what I use for my patients on every aspect of functional medicine. You just can't use chelation. You can't use vitamin C or ozone. This is a book. So if you guys want it, please, uh, please order it. And give me a nice, please give me a nice review. I need those reviews. Yes. If it is not good. Don't say anything, but if it's good, please say it's, it. It's good. It's good. I've read. <laughs> I want to thank you for being a, for listening to me patiently, Dr. Milly. But just, just before you give me that applause, uh, I put out some, some of the sites that we have for learning. Like Dr. Milly said, we do a lot of workshops uh, every month. Or I've not done it for the last three, four months because I've been busy. Uh, this is a workshop that we are going to do in June for those who are interested in chelation. Uh, and we have... This one on gut health, three-day workshop coming up on 12th, 13th, and 14th of May. There's a, there's a, there is a, there is a, you, you can use. Scan, barcode. Scan, 
scan and and register for it so you can you have the barcode there so you can do that uh qr code there so you can do that uh if you want to there's a special offer for you today but we are doing this we are full we have already 40 people who are joining it that's our limit uh and if you want you can please join that as well so thank you with that i'm done thank you dr led uh, i'd like to thank dr milly and i like you to give her a big hand because she's been doing this consistently for the last Yes. years that I know you? Yeah, 15 years. 2005 onwards, I've been coming to the Ozone Forum. You guys have been an awesome audience. Thank you so much for giving me your time and listening to me so patiently. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lenny. And uh, oh, no questions. No, no, no questions. Sorry. Hey, guys, I'm available outside. You can come and ask me the questions yes. outside. So uh, I would request... Where's Dr. Shri there? No. Okay. Anyway, Dr. Karthikin, please... Dr. Shri, please come. And uh, please hand over this memento to Dr. Lenny.